What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through a day in the life of a high school special educator. Oh my God. Now I wake up at 3.30 every single morning, but yes, mama, it's coming. Look at it, it's loading. It's just going really slow. Oh, bubble guppies, right? Bubble guppies, Paw Patrol. My day actually starts the night before, usually around five o'clock. And the reason why it starts the night before is because every night at five o'clock, I'll eat my last meal of the day, my dinner. As soon as I'm done with that meal, I'm gonna prep every single meal for the following day. So what I prepped, the meals that I prepped the night before are my breakfast, my overnight oats, my lunch, and then my protein sludge bowl. So I technically prep four of the five meals that I eat the night before. Now if you wanna see what those meals look like, you're gonna to have to go back and watch a full day of eating. But like I said, typically, for I'll wake up, I'll have my pre-workout meal, which is my, my pre-workout along with a carb powder. I'll work out, as soon as I'm done, I will have my eggs and then my bagel with a little bit of peanut butter on it. And then a couple hours later at about 8.30, 9 o'clock, right before first period starts, I will eat my overnight oats. And then for lunch at around 11.30 to 12, because I have a prep that goes from 11.30 to 12.30, so I can eat lunch any time that time, any time within that hour, I'll eat my actual lunch. And then at three o'clock, 2.33, right before I come home from school, I'll eat my protein sludge. So I'm gonna make that right now. Now I just recently started cooking all, even my eggs the night before. And some people are like, you cook eggs and then microwave them? Yeah, is it the best and tastes the same as when I eat it fresh? Obviously not, but one of the things is, is waking up at 3.30 in the morning when my daughter and my wife are sleeping, the biggest thing is that I have to be quiet. So where I found that I could cut time and then obviously be quiet so I don't wake them up, I prep everything the night before, put it in the fridge, and then technically the only thing I have to do in the morning is I open the fridge, I might, which you'll see tomorrow morning, I open the fridge, microwave my eggs while my eggs are microwaving, I'm toasting my bagel, and then I pretty much load up all the, th the meals and I'm good to go. So I'm not going to show you technically what it looks like all cooked. You'll see that tomorrow. But this is what I have in front of me that I'm about to prep. I got oats. I got my protein I use for my sludge. This is chocolate marshmallow and it's delicious. I got my collagen powder, which again has 15 grams of protein. I put this in my oats. And then I got my, I got my Formula One post-workout protein, which also I put in my oats. Delicious. Put this in my oats. I put 150 grams. I put 150 grams of almond milk, and then I'll have three whole eggs along with a cup of egg whites. I'll do a slice of cheese. So technically, as soon as I'm done working out, I'm gonna I'll do my eggs, I'll do my bagel, and then three hours later, once I'm actually about to start first period, or two and a half hours later, that's when I'll have my um, overnight oats. So. It's been working for me. One of the keys that you're gonna see from this full day, a day in the life is I am very intentional about everything I do and I never ever accept I don't have time as an excuse, whether that be I don't have time to work out, I don't have time to prep, I don't have time to cook my meals. Again, I got crock pot chicken that I cooked earlier today. I got some chicken thighs, which I just pulled off the grill. And then tomorrow I'm gonna throw on some ground turkey when I get home. So realistically, anytime I tell people what I do when I wake up, when I work out, how I read, and you'll see what I do in an entire day, they're just like, oh, I don't have time. And they usually make up some excuse of things they gotta do at work. They blame it on their kids, they blame it on their spouse, they blame it on their job, whatever it is. Take responsibility for your life. If you have goals, which everybody should, take responsibility, be intentional, and I guarantee you will be able to use your time. You never find time and you never make time. Everybody has the same amount of time. You just get better at using your time. That's the first tip of this day. But anyway, I'm gonna cook all of it, prep it for tomorrow, enjoy my nightly routine with my wife and daughter, and then I will catch you guys at 3.30 in the morning. So get some sleep, because tomorrow you're about to see what it, how exciting the day in the life of a high school special education teacher is. Good night.
So my day starts by my alarm clock going off every single morning at 3.30 a.m. Sunday through Sunday. First thing I do as soon as I wake up is I go to the other side of the bed, kiss my wife goodbye, say have a great day. Next thing I do, I go disarm the alarm and then I weigh myself. This is something I just started doing. I'm trying to create the habit of weighing myself every single day. That way I can monitor exactly how much my weight is fluctuating. After I weigh myself, I go drink about eight to 10 ounces of cold water and start making my pre-workout concoction. Depending on the day, I will do either do a full scoop of Project One or a half a scoop mixed with one scoop of Enduraformance, which is basically a carb powder. So I'll mix that up. Immediately I drop to the floor and I grab my Bible and then my daily men's Bible read and I begin my 15 to 20 minutes of stretching. This is something I just recently started doing. I switched up my morning routine. If you guys have watched my previous morning routine, it's pretty similar, but there are a couple things that have changed. So since I realized that my daily Bible read takes about 15 to 20 minutes, I use that time to obviously drink my pre-workout and get my stretching in. And I started doing this because I realized that I was not as loose and limber and I needed to work on my ability. So I put that back into my morning routine. So I stretch for 20 minutes, I change, grab my bag, and I am ready to go into my garage gym, AKA a gogi, and get my workout on. Depending on the day, usually my workout takes anywhere from 45 to an hour. I'm not gonna show the full workout. If you're curious to see what my workouts look like, I have videos for that. So I'll work out for about 45 minutes to an hour. As soon as I am done with that, I will hop on the treadmill uh, and I will do steady state cardio. I'll put the incline at seven, the resistance at three, and I'll walk. During this time, I will read 30 minutes of personal development book that I am currently reading. Once that 30 minutes is up, I'll use the remainder 15 minutes to usually start on my homework for my master's course. Once I'm done with that, I immediately go inside and start eating everything that I prepped the night before. So the only thing I actually have to make for my breakfast is uh, toast a bagel. So I put the bagel in, as that's toasting, I microwave my eggs, and pretty much that's it. <clears throat> I'll eat my breakfast take my vitamins, drink my daily vitamins, and then I go take a shower. Obviously, once I'm done with the shower, I start getting ready for work. Once I am done getting ready and all done shower, then I will go out to my truck, turn it on, warm it up, because it is cold right now where I live. While that is warming up, I am going inside and I'm gonna start packing my, my bag for the day. Yes, I do have a massive bag. I had someone ask me the other day if I was going on a hike when they saw me leaving school, and I said, no, it's just for all my food that I bring. The look that person gave me was kind of ridiculous. So I grab my bag, go out the door, and now I'm on my way to work. It only takes me about six to nine minutes to get to work. It's a very small commute. Uh, it's literally just two freeway entrances from my house. So I'll do that, and I usually get to school or my work at about 7.20 to 7.30. Now, I don't have to technically start until 8.15. That's what time they expect me to be here. So for the remainder, I'll, first thing I do is I get into my classroom, turn on lights, unpack all my lunches, I'll put, unpack my bag, I put it down, um, and then I write up my daily affirmation. This is something I started doing with my students, they really like it. Just a way that we could have kind of a positive feedback where my students come from. Their home life is not always the best, so I try to start the day, or start the class off with something positive and I actually make them read it out loud. Once the daily affirmation is done, then I sit down, which me, brings me to here, where I am right now. So that was my morning routine as a ninth grade special education teacher. So now that that is done, like I said, I usually have about 45 minutes due to filming today. I only have about 35, 35, yeah, 35 minutes. Um, so this just gives me about 35 minutes, 35 to 45 minutes that I can sit here, do my homework, um, and try to get ahead, that way I can, do not have to do my homework at home. I don't like doing homework at home. I'd rather do it when I'm at my job and I'm not at home where I could be hanging out, with, spending time with my wife and my daughter. So 45 minutes, I'll sit here, I will do my homework. And I started doing that because what I realized is 45 minutes, five days a week, usually that allows me that I don't have to do any homework when I'm at home and I could be spending time with my daughter and wife. So a lot of people would say that my morning routine, I get a lot done, and I do get a lot done. I have not been doing that for a very long time, um, and it came from making adjustments. But this is why I find I have a hard time when I hear people say, I don't have time, I can't find time, and I'm not able to make time. It's not like you just find time. It's not like it's underneath the couch and you just pull it out. And it's not really like you make time. I feel it, time, everybody's given the exact same amount of time. 
It's how you fill your time and how you're intentional with your time that separates you from the average person. Yes, I get a lot done in the morning, but it's because I consider it stacking time. For instance, if I said, oh, I need to stretch, I need to do my daily Bible, I need to do homework, I wanna do personal development, and I start saying all those things that I need to improve on, and I wanna work out, and I wanna start walking, all of those. Most people would agree that they do wanna improve those, but as soon as you say any of those, like, oh, I need to start uh, reading more, I just don't have time, or, oh, I need to go to the gym, but I, I can't find time. These are often common. All of these things that I just named that people would like to incorporate in their life, I stack them. And some people would be against multitasking or doing multiple things at once because you don't really get your focus. Um, depending on what you're doing, I agree with that. But for instance, walking at an incline, and reading, I don't really see anything wrong with that. And for instance, like reading the Bible and stretching, these are two things I wanna do. Now, if I said, oh, I'm gonna read the Bible for 15 minutes, and then when I'm done, I'm gonna stretch for 20 minutes. Well, now I'm running out of time, as opposed to if I do them at the same time, I'm stacking time. I am a firm believer that you can actually get a lot done if you are intentional about it, most people, because before I even had this routine, all my life I've always had someone say, oh, it must be nice, or I'll be able to do that too if I didn't have this. For instance, when I was working out six days a week, everybody's like, oh, it's easy for you because you're single, you don't have a girlfriend. As soon as Cassie and I started dating, it was, oh, it's easy for you because you're not married. As soon as Cassie and I got married, it was just like, oh, well, it's easy for you because you don't, you're not going to school and you're married. And, I, and as soon as I started going to school, then it was, oh, it's easy for you because you don't have kids. And then as soon as I had Adeline, it was, oh, it's easy for you because you don't have multiple kids. No matter what it is, Someone's always gonna be saying, oh, it's easy for you because, and as soon as they say that, the reason they're saying that is because they know what they need to do, but they aren't willing to do it. So anytime someone tells me like, oh, it must be nice to work out six days a week and do this or whatever, I'm looking in the back of my head like, I'm thinking in the back of my head, it, it, you could easily do it, you're just not intentional with your time. And that's something that you, if you're watching this, I may be talking to you. And if I am talking to you, look yourself in the mirror, man up, don't be average. All right, so now that my, that part is done, I am gonna actually start doing some homework because I gotta knock out some as many much homework as I can before first period. First period starts at about 8.30. Before first period starts though, I will eat my second meal. I guess you could call it my third meal if you count my, my pre-workout shake. So my pre-workout, I usually drink this morning. I drank it at about 3.30, 3.45. And then as soon as I'm done with my cardio at about 5.36, I'll eat my post-workout meal and then two and a half, usually about 8.30, right before I have to go to first period, or sometimes even after first period, depending on if I have a lot to do, um, I will eat my overnight oats. So I'm gonna do some homework and then I will catch up with you before first period. All right, so it is 8.22, first period starts in about eight minutes. So I'm gonna eat my, I think you see that? My overnight oats, they came out pretty good. They're a little bit watery, so I think I will not taste like Fruit Loops. Actually, no, it tastes like fruity cocoa pebbles. The fruity ones, not the chocolate ones, not fruity pebbles. It tastes like fruity pebbles, not cocoa pebbles. That was a bell though, six minute passing period. Oh, also, I already drank one of these today. So in my previous video, like I said, I drink three of those a day. I was able to get some of my homework done. For all those teachers right now going through your master's program, I don't know what it is this week, especially, I have been wanting to quit my master's program so much. I'm so done with it. I'm so over discussion boards. I'm so over replying to people, especially when I feel like it's not even making me a better teacher. But that is my thought process right now. I only got 83 days until I am done with my master's program, and I'm gonna let you know right now, I am never going back to school ever again. I absolutely hate school. I love to teach, but I hate school. The cool thing is, is I finished my master's program two days before my birthday, but I just keep thinking in the back of my head how excited it will be when I actually walk across that stage, they say my name, and I get my master's. So I'm gonna finish this, go to first period, and then I will catch up with you guys for lunchtime. Oi, 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 oi! That's right. It's officially lunch. It's 11.40. Now the cool thing is, is my prep falls between both lunches. So if I want, I could go take my lunch now or I could take it during B lunch. But I am hungry, <clears throat> so I'm gonna eat my 
six ounces of ground turkey. I got some salted almonds. Some people say salt is bad for you, and that's why I say don't listen to some people. So I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna drink some more of my water, and then I'm gonna work on some IEPs. So usually during my prep, this is where I get like my, all my IEPs done, call parents, um, schedule IEPs, and pretty much just hang out. It's a good way to decompress. I like it because once I get back from lunch, I really only have two classes left. I have my fifth period, which all the students come to my class, and then I help them with their work that they're struggling in their other classes and then I go to my sixth period. So I try to get a lot of steps in right now. Let's see, shut up Siri. I'm not talking to you Siri. You ever just doing something and Siri just kind of butts in? I've, it's like very rude. Sometimes I'm teaching and I'm like talking and she just like says, I didn't quite hear you. And it's like, cause I wasn't talking to you, Siri. Um, so right now I'm at 8,000 steps. I try to get, I'm trying to start getting 15,000 steps a day. So I'm figuring out how I'm gonna do that. But I think what I'm gonna do is start incorporating like a 10 minute walk when I get to school, a 10 minute walk on my lunch slash prep, and then a 10 minute walk after school. I'm gonna see how many steps I can log. If I get hit 15,000, then I'm golden. <clears throat> if I don't hit 15,000 doing that, then what I think I'm gonna do is whenever I get home, unfortunately, I'll probably have to do, um, instead of doing my homework, uh, sitting down. Like if I'm falling behind on super, like a lot of homework for my master's course, I'll do homework at home, but I usually do it at my desk. Instead of at my desk, I'll probably do it on my walking treadmill and try to get 15,000 steps. For all you teachers that are out there saying you can't make it happen, just try to get your steps in throughout the day. It's easy, great way to lose fat, great way to curb appetite. Curve, there's that stupid word again. I don't know if it's curb or curve. Oh, and if you've been watching this far, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And make sure you subscribe and then comment below hashtag DBA. I wanna see how many people have actually been watching. This is like your homework slash test, your assessment for this video, all you teachers out there, hashtag DBA, and then timestamp it with whatever time it is right now, and we'll see if you're paying attention. That's the teacher in me. That's what we do to all the students that say they're paying attention. We throw in curveballs. Curve. Curveball, that's, that's actually curve. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy my lunch, and then I'll catch up with you guys. Oh, and one more thing. You know that like old saying that like, don't hang around the teacher's staff, or the teacher's lounge because everybody complains, that is 100% true. So there are a couple good teachers, luckily, that I've been blessed with that I'll eat lunch with just because they don't complain and it's a good vibe session. That's usually what I do. I'll eat my food and then go vibe with them. For the topping for my food, I forgot to tell you, I'm, I'm, I've been using this, Taco Bell's. There's literally zero calories in one tablespoon and it adds a little kick to the turkey. I think I'm getting sick. And unfortunately, I think I had my, my wife to blame for that because she got sick last week. I would never blame my wife. I love her too much. But I think she passed it on to me. I'm hoping that I could beat it, punch it in the face, and not be sick, but we'll see. Anyways, I'm going to eat this, and I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. All right, so I just finished my fifth period, and I'm about to head to my sixth period, which is my last class of the day. But I had to share this with you guys. Okay, so... I've had a lot of jobs before I was a teacher. I had 13 jobs, I think. 13 jobs from being a personal trainer, door-to-door -door salesman, uh, worked in a warehouse, work manager in a movie theater, did uh, multi-level marketing. I've pretty much done every sale or every job out there. So I have a lot of perspective. So I'm allowed to say this. Teaching, hands down, is the best job there is. And there's so many different reasons, but I'm gonna use this example because I've never had this in other jobs. So I get six periods a day. <clears throat> well, five, I won't care my prep. And what I love about teaching, and I experienced this, la this last year and I experienced it today. You go into a class and you're surrounded by 38 different personalities, okay? Each personality going through their own thing, their own struggles, their own walks of life. You get to learn about their background, who they are, what they come from, what they wanna do, all that stuff. So I love that part about teaching. And obviously, teaching them stuff is very fun especially when they get it, like that aha moment that teachers are always talking about, that's the best. So I had a couple of those aha moments today. I've had a couple of those uh, connections where, you know, talking to kids, asking them what they've been doing this weekend or whatever. But like today, this is what's crazy, okay? So I had one, one student that is, this student's just always been a struggle. Every teacher has it, a very struggle. So I'm not gonna go too much into details, but just know I have one student that I'm really struggling with to the point where it's just like, man, it was a rough day, it was a bad day. But what I love about teaching is when you have a bad day, 
Very rarely do you have a bad day. I have bad periods all the time. I'll have a bad fifth period, I'll have a bad fourth period, I'll be like, man, third period's on once a day. But what I love about this is I dealt with that kid for that period. And then literally the next period, I had a student come to my classroom, we were talking for about 12 minutes. This, this dude was about to break down crying just because he even got a little teary-eyed because we were just talking, I was asking, I literally say this to all my students, so what's your story? And they always look at me like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, w where are you from? What did you grow up doing? You know. What do, you, what do your parents do? And I just get to know my students. Well, when you are one-on-one -on -one with a student, and there's no other students around, and they're not trying to impress their friends, they're not trying to impress a girl, whatever it is, that's when you get the real student. And that is what I love about this job. For that 12 minutes that we were talking or whatever, we were connecting, you, you don't get that in any other job. You don't get in any other job that you have a terrible hour, and literally the next hour could be one of the best hours of the your entire work year. Most places, when you have a bad day, it's a bad day for eight hours. I have never had a bad day of teaching where it's bad for five periods. So I, I went from a, a student that I was like, man, this is freaking tough. And then literally the next uh, period, I have a student that's like breaking down, opening up, just talking to me about his struggles that he's going home, through with home. And like but when he left, I told him, hey, you know, my door's always open. Come eat lunch with me anytime. And it's like, God, teaching is just connections. Like I even, I, t I told someone this the other day, if I was to win the lottery or someone said, if your, ch if your YouTube channel was to blow up, which I, I hope my YouTube channel does blow up. I hope this video goes out and, and my message gets out there and I can inspire a lot of kids and, and, and impact a lot of people. That's why I got into teaching and teaching in the first place. So even if I was to win the lottery, I would never quit teaching because every single period, every single hour, every 58 minutes, I get a new batch of 38 kids that I have the opportunity to affect, impact, and possibly even change their life. And I take, I take pride in that, and that's why I love this job. So just thought I'd share that with you. I went from, oh my God, this job is crazy and I'm having a crazy bad day, and I need to go to the gym because I'm pissed off to literally the next hour like this is what I'm meant to do. So I thought I'd share that with you before I go to my last class. I got one more hour and then I get to go home to Chunky Tuna, AKA my little Adeline. All right, so six period is done. It is officially 3.20, which that means I am good to go home. However, if you are a teacher and you're watching this, you know that after school, the parking lot and everything is absolute chaos from all the parents picking up there their kids. So I use this as a chance to eat my fourth meal, fifth meal, one of my meals, my favorite meal, I call it my protein level one slash deliciousness. That's chocolate marshmallow. It smells delicious. Go ahead and give it a whiff, whiffy whiff. All right. So I'm going to eat this. As I'm eating this though, what I will do Two things. One, I'll check my step count. I'm at 10,400. So, what I traditionally do is every day at the end of the day, I will always call one of my students' parents and tell them something good that their student did today. I'll find something. Sometimes you don't have kids that do everything, something good every single day, but I still will find something, whether it was they showed up on time, they did their warm up. Sometimes it's super easy to think of a kid like, okay, cool, I'm calling home tonight, letting them know. I like to do this. It gives me a connection with every single one of my students. And then that way, if the student ever does something bad, it's a lot easier for me to call and talk to the parent. But I like doing it because a lot of these parents, a lot of these kids love when they come in the next day and they hear that I called home and it helps build my, my relationship with my students and then obviously with my classroom manager. So I'm gonna call that. Now, if I ever have a student that's bad, I still have to call, I call home for the bad student, but I still find someone good to call home with. I'd rather go home on a positive than a negative. So I'm gonna eat this, I'm gonna call a student, a student's parents, and then probably what I'm gonna do for about 10 minutes, I'm just gonna walk around the school. I'm gonna to try to get some steps in because I'm again trying to get my 15,000 steps and I don't really wanna go home and have to go out into the garage, excuse me, go out into the garage and do more cardio. So if I could do cardio while I'm here, waiting to leave anyway, like I said, I got about 10, 15 minutes before I head home. Um, that'd be awesome. So I'm gonna eat this, call home, get some steps in. All right, so I'm heading home now. I ended up doing a 10 minute walk and I got a thousand steps in. So I had this epiphany of what I'm gonna start doing in order to get all my steps in. Cause I realized, okay, if I do a thousand steps in 10 minutes, 
and that means I do 6,000 steps in an hour. Yeah, I know, I'm pretty impressed with my math. So what I'm gonna do is when I get to school, every morning I'll walk for 10 minutes. During my lunch, I'll walk for 10 minutes. And then after school, I'm gonna walk for another 10 minutes. So stick with me, all you math gurus. That's 30 minutes extra of cardio a day. And then I get six passing periods that are is a total of six minutes. So if you do six times six, that's 36. Again, I'm in full on math teacher mode right now. So 36 plus 30, that's an hour and six minutes of extra steps slash cardio that I just found. Because remember, we're always trying to find time that I could fit through my day. It's not going to interfere with anything that matters, my time with my little girl, my time with my wife, and family time, and it's still gonna give me all my steps. So I'm curious if I do 45 minutes of cardio in the morning, and then all of that, I'm curious to see what my average steps for the day will be. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, because I'll probably do a video on that, about how many steps you can get in the day, and you could step your way into fitness. All right, so I am home now. So typically when I get home, the first thing I do is I unload all my stuff from the day, which usually takes about 10 minutes or so. I put the dishes in the sink. I'll leave them there until I do my nightly routine. So what I'm gonna do right now though, it is a choo-choo train. So for like the next hour and a half, usually until like six, hour and a half, two hours, I spend time with that little tuna. I, yeah, I'm filming. I spend time with her, but since we are low on ground turkey, this is also an opportunity. Yes, mama. So, Cassie is currently at work. She works every Tuesday and Friday. So when I get home, it's just me and little tuna. So I'm gonna cook this ground turkey soup. What, mama? Well, come over here and I'll show you what it is. Do you wanna come see? Okay, well, come here. So. Since we are low on ground turkey, typically I'll have to meal prep. Oh, oh, I got a meal prep twice during the week. And since we are low on ground turkey, I'm gonna prep this and then I'm just gonna spend time with her. So I'm probably not gonna film any of that just so that I'm in the moment. And then I will probably catch up with you guys for dinner. I'm gonna brown some ground turkey right now so that I have some food for tomorrow's lunch. Are you putting a toilet car on your head? Huh? Cool, makes sense. So I'll catch up with you guys at dinner. <sighs> all right, so we are back where it all started. So we just got done eating dinner with Adeline and Cassie. Uh, I don't like filming when I'm with my wife and daughter, even though this is a day in the life. Um, I really like to be present with them. That's why I usually don't film like when I'm eating dinner with them and everything. Um, but I did just finish my nightly routine of prepping all my meals and everything because typically from like six to seven that's when Cassie's giving Adeline her bath and prepping her for basically bedtime her nightly routine so while she's doing her nightly routine it gives me some time to game it up a little bit I have about an hour 40, 45 minutes to an hour every single night that I'm able to play my game kind of just decompress relax and then at seven o'clock that's when we all go out to the living room and right now we're currently watching Big Bang Theory which we are Loving that show. Sheldon is absolutely hilarious. We've never seen it, so we'll spend basically an hour as a family, and then typically at about 8, 8.30, that's when I'm usually climbing into bed um, and doing the whole routine all over again. So that's about it. That is a day in my life as a high school sped teacher, as a father, as a master's program student. Very normal life. Don't do anything outside of the ordinary except for my schedule. I would say my schedule is kind of crazy or crazy kind of very structured. I'm not a very spontaneous guy. We were actually, they were I, they were making fun of me at lunch the other day saying that I'm not spontaneous. And I said, I, I plan everything. There's nothing spontaneous in my life. That's how I like it though. I'm a very happy guy. I, I am very blessed in a lot of ways. I am huge believer of attitude of gratitude and attitude of gratitude and I'm happy. So at the end of the day, if I'm doing my, you know, if my life's making me happy, I'm gonna keep doing it. If I was, the, the what doesn't make sense is the people that are unhappy like certain people that I work with that are super unhappy, but they don't change anything. That never makes sense to me. I'm super happy, so I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing and then always look for different ways to improve it. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention 
in my nightly routine that I always do because waking up early, I don't want to wake up my wife and daughter. So also make sure that you put out your clothes the night before. I literally on Sundays, I put out a whole week's worth of underwear, socks, um, and all my gym clothes. Pretty much every everything that I wear for work is actually in this room. This room is like my man cave, by the way. So this is where I do all my my homework, my gaming, my editing for my YouTube channel, everything. This is like my sanctuary where I spend most of my time. Um, but that is another thing. Make sure you have everything ready the night before and make adjustments. But that is it. If you are a teacher watching this, I hope this inspired you. I hope that you could take some stuff from this and maybe improve. If you are a teacher, comment below what your daily routine looks like. I'd like to see how many teachers actually are watching this video right now. And for everybody else who's been subscribing to the channel, I greatly appreciate it. I appreciate all your comments. I am really enjoying um, hearing all everything that you guys are doing, whether it's be a Spartan race, whether it's own personal weight loss program or weight loss journey. I, I'm getting a lot of feedback on Instagram. And honestly, I'm gonna be honest, it's, it's really motivating me and I'm having a lot of fun doing this just because it slowly is building a community of people that are enjoying the content. So thank you to everybody who's been liking the videos and sharing the videos and subscribing. We are very close to a thousand subs. So if you're watching this video and the video is not at a thousand subs and you have not subbed, make sure you sub. But until next time, you guys already know the motto, stay happy, stay healthy, and above all, don't be average. Now go be nice to your teacher.